it's Gadget UK here again, uh, another short uh, work related video actually. It's, uh, it's not taking any time out of my work doing this by the way because I'm kind of done at this point. Um, well, I'm not done, but it's going to take some time to replace the parts I'm about to do. So you can see straight away, bulging cap, bulging cap, bulging cap, all around the VRM. And straight down here you can see it looks a bit shiny and glossy, I was like, mm, I think that's baked. So I'll show you, we've got short on this MOSFET, short on this MOSFET. Now this is the VRM. Uh, there are four, uh, I think, can't see, well, maybe there's three phases here to this. So, you know, it uses PWM to generate high power, uh, low voltage, you know, because these use an awful lot of watts. They pull a lot of current processors, modern processors. So you have it split into phases in terms of the PWM there to spread the load to give more power. Um, at least that's my understanding. So you've got a phase here, I think. This one here is balked one here now there is a MOSFET there but I don't think that's sort of the phase I think there's three phases there might be two for this and one for something else so these two here may be for the CPU I suspect that's for the CPU as well and they're probably going to be providing V core to this um, so yeah my first uh, thoughts uh, so it's best if I just describe this the power light on the front of the Vostro there I'll show you that in a minute when it's uh, reassembled it was just going yellow and no fan spin so the fan on top of the CP here not doing anything no other activity at all we did have the yellow standby LED which I can't remember where it is I think it's down here somewhere that was illuminating when the power was uh, just plugged in but nothing else so of course I spotted the caps there being swollen and said to my boss, well at the very least it needs four new caps or so. I wouldn't replace every cap on here, most of the caps are good and it's all about brand again. And it's, it's always these, these get a hell of a lot of stress around this switching section here, which is why they go bad. Uh, so anyway I'll be replacing these, I'll inspect just to make sure there's no others that need immediate attention. But beyond that I got it out here to do that work, but I thought well let's just measure these MOSFETs. So this one here is definitely a short, 0.00, .00 and this one here is a very low resistance. Let's just put it on resistance mode. 15 ohms. It may be because this one's short, that one's measuring that way, but I honestly can't remember how they're wired. I, I've ordered one of these and one of those. And the part numbers, all I could see was D452. That was the one nearest the edge of the board, I think, and then the other one that's uh, uh, further into the board, to, near to the CPU, was D472. Turns out the, the code, the company thing before this is AO, so it's AOD452, AOD472. I could only find uh, 472As, mm, the voltage is less uh, in terms of what it's rated at, amongst other subtle differences. So I thought, well, I don't want that. I went to Farnell, searched for, in fact, I got those in the UK, 452, a seller in the UK, a pound each. So I've ordered a couple of those. Those. Bear in mind we only need one, but I've ordered a couple just in case he's got another one of these motherboards in another machine that eventually has the same problem or should another phase fail on this one. Um, the 472s I can't find anywhere apart from China. Now I don't want to wait 15 plus days for them from China. We don't know whether they're rebranded or relabeled chips or whatever. So I hit Farmel. I went through all the suppliers actually. Farmel had a, an equivalent. They said this is no longer in stock, there's an equivalent. And then the equivalent's no longer in stock and there's an equivalent. And I've gone for that. It's an IRF device. So it's a gamble. I honestly do not know enough about MOSFETs to be 100% certain whether it's going to work or not. But we've got to give it a chance, so I think I'm going to replace these caps here. We'll get these off with some hot air. And then the short should have gone at that point. I can measure there to make sure the short has gone. Now, if that solves the problem with the short, it may then power on. You know, you'd think that wouldn't work, but actually, sometimes when you've got multiple uh, phases here like this, let's say these three. Now, I don't know they're in parallel actually, because I think you'd expect to measure the short elsewhere. I could be wrong. It could be it depends on how it's. Yeah, so there's no short there, there's no short here, and there's no short over here either. I, I don't think. No, there isn't. So I suspect if we remove these, we may then be able to connect it back up and it may boot. We may have problems if we go over a certain performance threshold, or it may just be intelligent enough to realise it can't provide the power and limp. Yeah, go into some sort of limp mode where the CPU's, you know, in kind of like a power saving performance mode, you know, a power saving mode where it's not, you know, it's not going 100%. Uh, now, if that were, that would be really good because we'd be able to, you know, having replaced these and removed those, power it up, and make sure it boots and go, ah, oh, yeah, okay, 
the, the core of the system works, the CPU's not dead. Because that's the other thing, is I always worry that if you've got a problem like this, what's to say it's not killed the CPU or something else on the board there? Um, so I think the reason why we have the orange power light and that's it, doesn't do anything else, is it's intel the power supply is intelligent enough to go, you've got a dead short, you've got a dead short on the supply rail where these MOSFETs go, I think that's what's happening. It could be something that controls you know, the, the, the stuff here and that's detecting it. I don't really know where that's occurring. It could be just at the power supply level. But anyway, it's still a bit dusty. I did hoover this a little bit, but the next thing I'm gonna do is get these three off, replace them and remove those. So I just thought about this and if the MOSFETs don't remove the, you know, if the short's not gone when we remove these, there's no point in replacing the caps. So yeah, I'm gonna just turn the airflow down a little bit. We've got some really small resistors and caps and things around here as well, so yeah, I've got this maxed out the hot air station because this is not going to be easy to get off, I'm sure. Just inspect around something like this first to see what you might need to protect with caps and tape. I guess those inductors uh, hmm, might be an idea. They're kind of in a ceramic package though, so I think they'll be alright. The other problem I'm uh, aware of here is because these have failed short and the board looks a little bit baked, we could get some damage taking this off actually. The tab is the thing that really holds on on a board like this because you're dealing with a multi layer board. You know, it's probably like, ugh, I don't know, a dozen layers or something daft. More than six at least. Uh, and you have to be very careful not to knock any nearby caps and resistors and stuff. So I'm getting nowhere with this. I did manage to get the three caps off, but look how baked it is around here now. You can see a bit of copper here and a little bit of damage. This has proven impossible to get off. Now, I've just cut the pins here, yeah, on the actual package, to see if that would relieve some of the thermal mass, because it's, you know, it's not just about the ground, it's about these sides as well. Uh, that didn't make a difference. Uh, now, I've got an idea. These pads here in Paolo, I could literally just snip the pins off this, dissolve the bits there so that it's just still on the board, fix the bit of damage I've created here, solder the replacement here because it's in parallel. The only question then is can we get this one off? Well, it's going to be exactly the same challenge we've got here. Um, it looks a mess, it's just dirty, but it is a bit baked. But the caps are just heated from the other side and just pulled them through. So you can see, you know, the bungs have come out on the underside there as well as being swollen on the top. Um, but I'll replace those at the end. I'm just going to now just clean up with cotton buds and a toothbrush. That, I'm going to call a success, came off really easy. Well, I say really easy. I tried with hot air for a minute, it wasn't moving, so I stopped. I used the uh, normal soldering iron set to the AKA, 480 on the tab. And once the solder was molten, it still wasn't moving, put the hot air on and it just slid straight out. So I had to use the hot air and the HACO. Um, it's a case of my kit is not up to the job really for something like this. When you're working on boards with this many layers, and it's going to have many, it could be 12 layers or some of this board, probably more than six as I say, this is the problem. And you, you get these are on power and ground rails, aren't they? So they absorb tons and tons and tons of heat. You need a very power capable device, as I mentioned earlier. So this one had another go. It's just moving. It's welded itself to the, uh, the, the, the copper here. So there's some of the copper exposed here, there's some copper exposed exposed there, copper exposed there, and if you heat this for any period of time you can move it, it start, but the whole uh, pad, all of this here is coming up with it, so it's delaminated, there's no way I'm going to attempt any further with that, but as I showed earlier, these pads here are all in parallel with that, I'll just confirm that now, cut the pins, but if we test that one to that one, dead short, that one to that one, dead short, that one to that one, dead short so they are in parallel and I think that this is one of the reasons why a board like this fails because 
originally it was designed to have two of these in parallel to you know beef up the uh, current capability the power capability to the CPU there and as soon as you halve that yeah it might run but you know what how long will it last well this has lasted uh, several years it's not done too bad had it been doubled up here with the the, the the MOSFETs it probably wouldn't have failed and it's probably the failure of this one that's killed that one of course it could be the other way around but but I think not um, so anyway our, the main thing is our short here has gone there is no short across there and here there was a short there short has gone so it was definitely those two MOSFETs uh, unblocked the holes for the few caps around here there are more cap positions than there are capacitors so I might stick one or two additional caps around here just to help with that because as you saw the three that were on there were totally baked to bits weren't they um, you know the, the balls and all the rest of it um, it's interesting they've got this style here which suggests that they intended to put one two three four five six of those there and they've only put three uh, sorry four and the one that was here I think was one of these ones uh, I could be wrong it might be that one there one two yeah I think I'm getting confused but it's the same sort of thing that because they've halved these they've halved the caps well it would just run so much better if there was more caps there and if both of those were there so one of the replacement MOSFETs has arrived there's enough solder on the pads it's uh, I'll show you it's like one of these where it's pre uh, tinned with solder so I'm not going to add any more I'm going to use a combination of the hot air and the HACO I may need to switch the camera off here at some point because I am not sure that the solder is going to melt on its own. I may need to heat the tab here with the solder in at the same time. So I'll just try and hold it in position there. And uh, yeah, this is going to be the difficult part here. Trying to get it in the right place and uh, get it to join. So I'll still need to do a little bit more cleaning around there because there's a little bit of flux from a minute ago where I added some solder to this pad. In advance of this MOSFET turning up, there's perhaps a bit too much on there actually, so I'll remove some of that. If I just uh, test on connectivity, so in terms of short, we don't have a short here anymore, so that's good. It's obviously worth checking that way. Now, there's a low resistance there. If I put the meter on resistance mode, um, you may think there's a problem, there isn't actually. 10 ohms roughly, 9 point something ohms. And if I check this one here, it's the same this one down here exactly the same 9.1 ohms there's 9.1 ohms between those two connections I forget which one's gate source and drain here so I put some nail polish on the bits of copper that are exposed around there just makes it look a bit cleaner it's obvious that some bodge work has gone on here I mean the solder on that point there looks really dull doesn't it it's bizarre but the telltale sign there was a problem here on the underside it's baked around that area uh, around that MOSFET and that was before I tried to remove it. Um, anyway, if we just continue testing on resistance, so we've got some caps here. It's worth just checking to make sure you've not got a short on any of these rails here. And we've got one and a half meg. Um, and then we've got a resistor here, which is three ohms. That's correct. And there's one on the other side that you can measure just the same. And again, that comes out with the same resistance, I think. Yes, that one, three ohms. Um, there's a small component there. Is that a cap or a resistor? That's a resistor, 6.56k. And they've got a cap here. So, yeah, no shorts. And the resistors measure what they should measure. Again, that's uh, again that's 3 ohm, I think. Um, and we've got one down here. 3 ohms. And then a cap over here as well. Again, that's... 12 ohms so the bottom line is all the caps and resistors around here are okay they either measure the reading or as an explanation the three ohms I think is these I think these are three ohm in some circuits you've got to impedance match um, MOSFETs so that means testing them you know to, in terms of the gain and stuff and all that sort of thing um, so one thought I did have is you know we could have an imbalanced uh, thing here you know the, the charge pump or whatever how this works it could be slightly imbalanced as a result of having an equivalent here but I can't get the original ones uh, as a side note ironic isn't it I discovered whilst uh, thinking about this last night waiting for this this part obviously um, I wonder if there are any on eBay I searched on eBay 20 quid for a working board so yeah it's probably cost 20 quid in parts in terms of shipping and all that and the capacitors on the two MOSFETs um, so 
yeah, it's not cost effective, but it is in the sense that hopefully this will boot and Windows will work and be paired to everything on this board. Well, certainly the CPU, because they have a unique ID in those, they have a unique key. But maybe in terms of the chipset version and everything as well, you know, I don't know whether that other board at 20 quid is going to have exactly the same revision of hardware and stuff on here. Uh, and it might just cause us some issues, but that's nice to know. If this doesn't work, my next course of action will be to order uh, just one of those spare boards, I think, and just swap the board out. But the bottom line is a board like this is just really not worth anything. It's worth more to the business than it is to an individual to purchase. So after about nine days or so, it took blooming ages to get this uh, MOSFET. You can see it's arrived. I just need to just uh, get it in position. It's a AOD452. Obviously we've got the blob of solder you've seen underneath here. So I'm going to heat this up with some hot air. I may need to use the hay column there at the same time just to get that tab to you know, grip the PCB. Got lots of uh, old pieces of captain tape. Whenever you use this captain tape, stick it on top of your soldering station. You may have seen that in the past where I had loads of strips of it. That's what these are. They've been used lots of times. But I'll bin these after this. But I've got like three or four on that two or three or four here, two or three or four around here. Just try and minimise the chance of, you know, if I have to spend five or ten minutes with my crusty R10858D heating that up, because it's really not up to the job. I could get uh, maybe a bigger nozzle to surround that, that might do it, but these boards absorb so much heat, as I've talked about throughout this video here. Um, and what I do know for 100% certainty is I, whilst I look like a Muppet from the way that's turned out, I am not a Muppet that did weld itself onto the board because when I came to do this one it was off in like 30, 30 to 60 seconds it came straight off no issues at all that however would not budge even after like 15 minutes with the hot air you know maxed out you know it just would not move at all that did when it failed it welded itself onto the board um, now I might even put a, a close up of a, a shot of that from early because you could see the pins were like light blue on it that shows you how hot that's got for the metal to, to turn light, light blue like that shows you that when it failed at some point it got so 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 blooming hot that it stressed the actual structure of the metal that's what that shiny blueness was to the metal and that was the clue when I first looked at this and I saw those two because they didn't look blown did they but what it did look like you know there was a, a, a burn mark on the underside it looked like obviously it got hot on the underside of the board and it's, it's still like that now I'll show you in a sec but the pins were really really blue if you see blue pins on a MOSFET like that there's a chance that that is the fault anyway I may not be able to capture this as I say because it's going to take uh, some heat and some time and I may need to use both hands as I bring the Heiko in whilst I heat with hot air to try and get that to sit on there. But yeah, I am just literally just going to heat like this. Let's just see. Uh, hang on, I'm going to put something under it actually. Yeah, if you're heating uh, a board like this, pay attention what's on the underside because any kind of knocks and pressure from, you know, anything could uh, dislodge those components. But yeah, I am literally just going to focus it on this and just see if we can get it to bite just with hot air initially um, I'm, I'm going to put it slightly crooked like that because in theory if it did get to temperature it should just move a little bit I don't know maybe not that crooked and of course it could just move the transistor out hey, look you can see it melting the solder underneath is melting yeah, this gives me confidence that my approach, let's say, was not wrong, and that this desolder station is kind of up to the job, because that solder is melted, so there we go. There we go. Yeah, I feel so much better. Right, so I'll let it cool a little bit, and then I'll add some more solder on here, solder the tab, and we'll solder the two points there. I mean, it's one of those things that has been really bothering me, because you know you doubt, you doubt yourself, don't you? It's not often I work on uh, boards like this, and you start to doubt your ability, you know, and you start to doubt your equipment. I'm like, am I doing this right? Is my equipment up to the job? Uh, yeah, well, I'm confident now. The answer is to that, both of those things is yes. Um, experience, well, experience would now tell me that I've spent more than two or three minutes trying to get that off. Just stop, because all you'll do is do what I started to do with that MOSFET and start to delaminate the PCB. Yeah, more heat and more time isn't the answer. I'm not really sure what technique you could use if you got into the scenario I was in, where it wouldn't 
you know, it wasn't freeing up. Um, one thought that did cross my mind is a temperature shock. That might, but that might delaminate the board again and you could damage things nearby. But what I mean by temperature shock is if that, as, as it seems to be here, welded to the, the pad, if you heated it up to say 450 or 480 degrees for a minute or two, get it nice and hot, the point where it, sh it should have come off you know, a minute earlier and it still hasn't come off, and then spray freezer spray on it, shh, because the temperature difference of this suddenly going instantly cold, but the board wouldn't be, it may just detach itself. That's just an idea. It's just a thought. Someone could point in the comments down below that I'm completely wrong there, and that would do further damage to the PCB. No idea. But that's the only thing I can think of where uh, you know the metal tab has welded itself onto the, the pad below on a certain point. Uh, how do you get it off? Maybe thermal shock would do it, but it may damage the board more. And of course, trying to direct that freezer spray onto here, but not onto the PCB where you may damage the board, it's quite difficult. I don't know, you'd have to mask off all around it, I think, maybe. You could cut a little square uh, thing of captain tape and then do that. Heat it, heat it up super hot and freeze it. And then heat, the, heat it up again. And you may find it comes off because of that thermal shock. Uh, anyway, just the tab to deal with now. So we may need to uh, push the temperature up here. I'm at 450. Let's just see. And obviously I've got completely the wrong tip here. I'm trying to stay away from that cap. I think when I did the tab on that other one I used, the, yeah, that's not melting properly. Let's just bump up the temperature. Um, what I was going to say is I may need the hot air as well. You see the tip, the size of the tip will dictate whether you transfer the heat. And obviously I'm coming in at a really shallow angle here. So I can't really... get onto it we'll just get the hot air onto that as well i think because otherwise it's just not going to reach temperature oh. there we go i'm confident that that is well adhered to the tab so moment of truth is this going to work well i, I think not there could be a secondary problem, so as I said earlier, the CPU could be dead, something else around here could be dead, the device that controls these MOSFETs could be dead, you know, there's going to be some sort of uh, power management IC or something, isn't there, that produces the PWM to drive these. Um, and I think, as I said, there's a few phases here, isn't there? So the other problem we could have is gain. If this equivalent MOSFET here, its gain is too dissimilar to the other phase, maybe it could fail instantly and destroy this one again. Maybe this one could be more efficient than the other one, and the other one could then fail. There's all sorts of things that could go wrong here. But we're just going to try this. The worst case scenario is this, this does not work. I will just go and order another board off eBay, I think it's uh, for 20 quid. Uh, I may as well just swap the board out, but I'm hoping that this does work. I mean, I'll be super, super, I'll be over the moon if this works. I really will. It will make my day, but I don't know. It's a confidence thing. I'm not fixed uh, a motherboard like this myself. I've just seen uh, other people do it. You know, I'm aware of the how this works and stuff. This, this part of the circuit here. There's just so many variables, and you know, PC motherboards are never easy. If you're watching this, uh, you know, you're used to my repairs on my channel, and you've done lots of retro repairs and stuff. If you think this is as easy as a C64, think again. <laughs> Seriously, it's a whole world of difference. Everything is so much smaller, and without a microscope, I mean, I haven't got a microscope here, I'm using a magnifier periodically, but without decent magnification, without decent hot air and without a decent iron, it's uh, it's not not easy at all. The positive thing leaving that transistor there, the old MOSFET, is it's a little heat sink, isn't it? It's just helping that whole area stay a little bit cooler or dissipate a bit more heat through the surface of the MOSFET from its, its tab. Anyway, that's, that's looking pretty clean, I think. So I'll just inspect with magnification, and then we'll reassemble it, I think, and see what happens. And there's the underside on that one that welded itself on. Now, I can't quite remember, I'm pretty sure I looked originally and I was like, ah oh, yeah, it's baked that. So I don't think that's got any worse, I think that that is uh, yeah, evidence of the original overheating problem. I think the point it failed, it must have got ludicrously hot. 
So I think if you see something like that under the area where you're suspecting there's a fault, um, yeah, that could be a clue that it has welded itself on there. So obviously, and it's clean uh, the flux away from around these cap points here. And we've got one cap missing, I've noticed. I haven't fitted that yet. I was waiting for that MOSFET, so I'll do that now. Uh, and then we can reassemble and test it. Uh, it's worth just checking, I haven't got shorts actually, but I'm pretty sure the shorts went as soon as I removed the, the, the two MOSFETs, both of them had failed. And I think it's one of those where one MOSFET shorting kills the other one. But you see they could have killed the, the IC that drives them, that's, that's my concern. And it might not be shorted, it might just be not driving them at all. Uh, we may find it powers up, but one phase is not working or something, I don't know. I don't know, just got to hope, hope. Have, hope have some good luck with it, I think. Yeah, so the final cap was here, wasn't it? And uh, I'm just trying to see which side the bands go to now. Yeah, the negative goes to the white uh, band. I'm not sure that hole's unblocked there, actually. No, it's not. Might need to just desolder that one hole. So, the cap is back on. Um, if you struggle on these, and I was doing uh, with one of them, get a drill bit. Test on one of the holes that is unblocked first. You want a drill bit that's uh, smaller or at least an equal in size to the hole, and I just went straight down on the solder, it, it unblocked really easy. Um, that's just a tip, if you've not got the right kit, whilst I've got a good Heiko here, the tip is tiny, but the solder points are tiny, so yeah, there's nothing really lost, I haven't damaged the through hole or anything, but let's just measure now this transistor, uh, I'll see if I can show you, and we'll compare to the other phase over here, hang on, I've got the jitters a bit here, so, hang on, 582, Let's just check that one. Hang on, it's that one, isn't it? 582. So, we've got the same reading there. Let's just flip those around the other way. Hang on. Sixteen oh five. Comparing phases, yeah, 1606 is always a good idea. Um, and just measure in different orientations with regards to there is a low resistance somewhere in here I think yeah the gate source and drain 457 and climbing a little bit 457 climbing a bit yeah so so far I have no reason to feel overly concerned uh, about this Yeah, so that's climbing, isn't it? It's a bit of cap tape on my cap, I need to remove. Same thing there. So let's just get that piece of captain tape off. I don't know how that's happened. I just didn't notice it was wrapped around that cap. There we go. Uh, and then the final thing is, this is a substitute. So this is where there could be a huge problem. Certainly in terms of its gain. 496. 496, uh, let's just check from the, the tab, 500, 500, yeah there's the low resistance, 0 0.005 on there, it's not, it's somewhat like, I don't know, 13 ohms or something, same on that one, so there is a low resistance there, but I think that's this, I think this is between a couple of the connections there, what we had originally was a short between those two bottom connections, uh, so, let's go and assemble it and give it a try. So, wrist strap on whilst doing this. Yeah, I'm not sure if I've got all the connectors here. We've got that one that went there, without a doubt. The green one, the white one, the blue one. That says USB 3. So, yeah, maybe, and the yellow one down here, that's right. I've uh, got the fan here. And then we've got the four pin one here. So yeah, just trying to align it, there we go. So I'll get the motherboard screws in, then we'll get all the connectors. I'll stick the heat sink on there without applying any thermal paste, just to see on our first power on, see if it works. Obviously I'll fit the RAM and stuff as well. Uh, anyway, I'll report back in a sec. So at the moment of truth, I've been as careful as I can here, reassembling it, made sure everything's connected up. Um, the one thing that's not in there is the network card at the moment. I did just, after getting the CPU back in, measure those connections on that MOSFET just to make sure they weren't shorted still. Because you never know, I think that that might, you may be able to measure something there if the CPU had shorted. So, uh, yeah, let's just go for this now. Uh, I'm not sure, not sure if it's going to blow as soon as we stick this in. We're going to get some sparks, some fumes. 
a bang, I don't know, let's just plug this in and yeah that's not on, maybe it's not plugged in actually let me just check that yeah it wasn't plugged in, now it's plugged in uh, so I'm just going to not press the chassis, let's just plug it in is that on? I'm not sure don't see any fumes or anything Let's try pressing the power switch. Oh wow! The power's on! Hang on, it beeped. Is that a good sign? Or has it failed? Not seeing any video. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on right now. Oh, hang on. Yeah, there's something on the screen. Something failure. What's that? Keyboard failure. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see that. There's so much of a light glare on there. It says keyboard failure, F1 to continue. Let me go and get a keyboard. Uh, let me just power it off a sec, if I can find the power button. How's it gone? Oh, the good news is it does seem to be powering up there. So I've got a USB keyboard and mouse. Also got the network card back in. Um, let's get the power again. And switch it on. There we go, Dell, yeah, hopefully you can see that. The lighting in here is awful, <laughs> it really is, it's just so sunny. So let's see what happens. Hey, it's working, fantastic. Now, well, I'm holding my breath, just in terms of time here. What I mean by that is, yeah, this might run, run right for two or three minutes and then the MOSFET might go, ah, I'm too high gain, and boom, something happens, I don't know. So I will need to, Test this for a period of time here. Is it still working? Has that bombed? Oh no, look, we've got a login screen. Fantastic. So, uh, I will report back. I need to test the USB dongle that was in here as well. I think that's a little memory driver. So this is Microsoft. It could be a key for something, actually. Anyway, I am very, very pleased, as you can imagine. Because it didn't, uh, well, so far, it hasn't gone boom again. So testing for about an hour there, no problems at all. I managed to get the pasta to get into this. Did a disk scan, everything fine, everything running fine. CPU core running normal, you know, 100%. It's only like a two gigahertz processor this, but it is run at uh, full speed. If there was a problem with uh, the power there, you may find it goes into a limp mode where you're not getting 100% CPU, but yeah, no worries. And the other thing is whilst testing there, putting it under a bit of load and stuff, just testing the temperature around the MOSFETs. Stone cold, they don't even really get hot. So I think the fact that those did get hot, uh, you know, one of them welded itself on, just shows you that it was the short. It just shorted and then that's what generated all the intense heat, I think, at that point. So I do hope you found the video interesting. A little bit of a different uh, type of video on my channel, but uh, anyway, uh, modern PCs fail just the same as retro stuff, just harder to fix. I hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.